Good morning, everybody. At least it's morning in my neck of the woods. Um, today I would like to show you a small demo on going from SAP Datasphere into Databricks and vice versa. So both scenarios you can actually do. So you can use all your views and all your data you have in SAP Datasphere coming from S4, for instance, which you replicated in real time. Um, and then you can actually consume that into Datasphere. Uh, sorry, in Databricks, um, and you could actually do that even virtually, so without even loading the data. And the same goes vice versa. So you could build a uh, beautiful notebook in Databricks with whatever ML calculation you do, and you can read that back into SAP Datasphere. And also, you can also do that federated, because you can do that based on a remote table. So, very cool scenario, and today I'm going to show you the ins and outs. So let's start off with... Um, with our first scenario, which is going from SAP Datasphere into Databricks. So we go from the left to the right. So what do we need? Of course, we need a Datas Datasphere environment. We have the one of those at Interdops. Um, so we have many spaces. Uh, one of them is called the Interdops demo space, which has a ton of different views. Um, and the view I'm actually going to use today is called Profit Center Reporting. Um, what is required in this um, in this view, and that's basically always the case, is when you want to consume a, um, a view you create in Datasphere, you need to basically tick a box saying that you want to consume it outside of Datasphere. That is the whole openness which Datasphere has, which is a pretty cool, uh, cool functionality. Um, so you see that already on the right. So this one is uh, is still loading. It's loading some of the uh, uh, some of the data. We have a, a union, so we're actually probably doing uh, budget data and actual data and union that together um, and this is this tick i was talking about so exposed for consumption that's qu yeah quite important um, so that basically means you can consume it so if i would like to see uh, the data from this uh, from this view i can do that in two ways i can just click on this one but that actually takes quite a number of resources in the system so what we normally do here at interdops is we use the beaver our favorite tool of choice and basically read the view directly from the uh, from the database and that's um, that's perfect so what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this view with yeah budget and actual profit center data and we're going to consume that into databricks so how do we do that it's actually very simple so what we do is we need a database user and database users are uh, basically created on the yeah, let's say on the uh, on the config side. So what we do is we go into the uh, database access. Uh, we go to the database analysis users and we create one. So I actually created one which is called Databricks. Um, and that one has access to all the, yeah, basically to all the spaces. Uh, you can also put in a validity period. In this case, I think it's indefinite. Probably the safest thing to do for you. Uh, guys at home guys and girls is to do that uh, i don't know for five days or so all right so i have this databricks user i have this host name i have this port number i've enabled schema access so that's important because otherwise i could never actually go into the data of the um, in the different spaces and i also have a password i will leave that uh, up to you um, then we go into my Databricks cluster, uh, and for this example, I actually have a, um, a compute. So basically, I have my own compute, which is running at the moment. It's called Ronald Kneinenberg's cluster. And what I also have is a SQL data warehouse. Uh, that SQL data warehouse we're going to use later on for our demo, which consumes data out of Databricks into Datasphere. For, so for the moment, we basically use the, uh, the compute here. Um, so if I go into my into my workspace, I can go into my uh, notebook. So I just created a notebook, and as you can already see, it's using Scala and SQL, and actually it's also using Python. And the cool thing is that with uh, basically uh, notebooks in uh, in Databricks is that you can use different languages. So you see on the right hand side that I'm using Python here, I'm using Python here, I'm using SQL here, Scala here. So I can basically yeah, uh, use that all. Um, so I can run my notebook. So what I do is I create a, um, a Scala piece of code, which is basically doing a connection. So it's doing a connection 
into my JDBC URL. So the, the exact same one I was using uh, basically when I was defining my uh, database user. Um, and I do a select on my specific query. I put that into a data frame. Then I read the data frame. And then basically, so this is job is now done. So now you can see that it actually read my, um, my view. So next step will be that it's doing some SQL. Um, I, I put this in place. So what, what you can basically do is you can create these visualizations and data profiles as well in notebooks. So you can create a data profile, which then gives an idea of the data you have in your system. Uh, of course, you can also look at your, uh, at your raw table data. Um, yeah, you name it. Um, and because just because I can, what I also did is I, uh, um, I did a, um, a piece of Python code, <coughs> which is using a library called matplotlib pyplot, which is basically a, yeah, a graph library. And I plot the data into a, um, into a table or into a graph. So long story short, actually, when you have a database user and you have a, um, a notebook, then you can basically already consume the data because of the new openness of Datasphere. You can e very easily connect to the data. Uh, and as you can see, I'm not reading anything here or I'm not loading anything here. I'm just doing that virtually in real time. So cool scenario, you can really do that end to end. So this is scenario number one I want to, I want to show you. And there is a variety of different ways of doing this. Uh, you can also use ML. Um, you can use whatever you like in, in order to, uh, to make that connection. This is by far the easiest way to do it. So if you just want to quickly uh, connect to a certain view um, and get the data once off or whatever, just, or you just want to play in, in, a in a demo environment, this is, the way, uh, this is the way to do it. Very simple stuff. And Databricks also has a trial period. So if you want to play with it, I think you can for 15 days or so. So this is one of the uh, one of the scenarios I wanted to show you. Very easy. So connect, read data, make a graph out of it, and uh, yeah, you can do whatever you like with it. So that's basically um, scenario number one. Um, there is one important thing I would uh, need to mention to you guys is that you actually have to load the driver uh, into uh, yeah basically into the system before you can actually use it. Um, and that is actually done, I think, on the uh, on the compute level. So what you need to do is you need to load the HANA driver. Uh, and that HANA driver is basically in my library. So there's one step. What you need to do is get the HANA driver and load that because otherwise it can you cannot refer to it in your uh, into your notebook and then it will actually not work. But this works uh, brilliantly, as you can see. So that was scenario number one. And now we go to scenario number two, which is actually getting data from Databricks into SAP Datasphere in a federated way. Uh, so again, I have this uh, SQL uh, data warehouse running at the moment. Um, I can look at the data via the catalog function. That's may maybe the easiest thing to do. Um, so it's, uh, it's getting my Hive Metastore. And you will see that there is a table called IoT data there, which I just created. Um, and that data has, um, yeah, basically has some dummy data of some places in Rotterdam uh, with um, yeah, basically some, uh, some IoT type data. Doesn't really matter, it's just for the, uh, for the example, um, just to show you that you can actually consume the data which is already uh, in Databricks. Um, actually, the cool part of uh, Databricks is also that you can also use that in the Beaver. So, Again, the Beaver is a fantastic tool. So as you can see, I was connected to Datasphere here, but I can also connect to my Databricks environment. Um, so I'm actually doing that here as well. So same thing as I'm just doing here with this, uh, with this catalog function. Um, you can basically do a connection. Uh, same thing, go into your Hive Meta Store, and there is my IoT table again, which you then can use to uh, consume the data. Um, so yeah, so this is the IoT data I was talking about. So it has device names, a timestamp, temperature, or whatever sensor type it is. Location, Rotterdam, of course, fantastic city. And then, uh, yeah, basically what we're going to do is we're going to read this data into the system. 
in order to do that, we need a couple of things. Uh, one thing is we need the connection, of course. Um, and the connection, again, is done by using a JDBC. Um, that's a little more complicated when you haven't set up the DP agent yet. Uh, but if you have, then basically it's a relatively simple. So again, this is my cluster, and my cluster is uh, the data is running um, in the MySQL data warehouse. I also have connection details, and I'm just going to show you that. Um, so here are my connection details to my SQL data warehouse. So this is actually the place where my data is stored. So that this is the place where this IoT data is. So I can use this, this JDBC URL in order to make the connection. And very handy, there's also a button here that says download drivers. And of course, we also need those in order to connect in data sphere to um, Databricks. Um, so what do we need on the data sphere side is that we basically need a DP agent. Um, now, I think most companies have probably set up already a DP agent because it's pretty much required when you want to do some, yeah, let's say, some cool stuff with uh, with your data so if you want to do um, more than just remote tables but also use uh, for instance uh, uh, data flows or you want to use replication flows or you want to use uh, semantic onboarding then you basically need a dp agent so that's quite fundamental so this one is running here data prof agent dwc it's running in our demo environment and what you, what you can see here it's called Camel JDBC adapter, that's actually a generic JDBC adapter which can connect to basically everything in the world which has a JDBC driver. So every single database uh, or whatever wrapper that will have a JDBC uh, driver can access this. Um, so this DP agent is running in our environment. I could actually probably even show you that very quickly. So if I go into my DP agent server, Let's continue. All right, then I do a quick connect. Right, so now in my DP agent server, so what I have is I have the DP agent running in the user SAP, where it, what, which is basically a default data provisioning agent, camel, lib, and here is my Databricks JDBC driver. So that needs to be in this place, otherwise it will never work. So that is requirement uh, number one. Okay, so once that is set up, I can actually set up the connection into Datasware. So I do that, of course, in the connection area. I go into uh, my space. So in this case, I'm going into my Interdops demo space. I think I have it over there. Um, because connections you actually create per space. Um, yeah, and there you have it, Databricks to Datasware. And if I press on the edit button, there you will actually see this uh, JDBC URL, which I was also using on this end. So this JDBC URL is in my connection. Um, there are some other things you need to do. So you have to read the documentation. There are some JDBC parameters you need to set in order to make this work. But once you set that up and you select your data provisioning agent, which is running this camel JDBC adapter, you're good to go. So what we can do now is very simple. Go into the SQL part of the um, um, of my space, or basically create a new view. I can do that in two ways: graphical or a SQL view. So let's say that I want to create a new SQL view. Then I would go into a blank canvas. Go to the sources. Go to my connections. Of course, go into my Databricks connection. Uh, yeah, there it is. It's coming up. Uh, Databricks. Um, it's the default. And IoT data. I can just drag that in. Um, and then basically, I can just do a, uh, I can use that data. Let's see if that works. Do a refresh. And then you can actually see that the data will be 
in the system. So then I actually have a virtual connection in. Maybe I should have done a top five instead of the first uh, couple of hundred. Probably a better idea. Because now it has to uh, basically re uh, read a bunch. And there is my data. So basically the same data which I have in Databricks, I can also consume into Datasphere. Very cool. Um, one thing though is um, it's quite important to have the same, or this Camel JDBC adapter is a bit uh, picky on the type, on the data types of the table. So be sure to take a look at that um, if, if your yeah, data format is actually supported. If not, then you probably have to do some remapping uh, in the Camel JDBC adapter or maybe even earlier on in Databricks. But as you can see, it's very simple, it's quite straightforward and uh, nicely done. Thank you for watching.